Hey guys, so today I'm going to take and, and print a model. It's a rocket that's going to be hollow. Um, Joel over on 3D Printing Nerd has used it several times. I want to go ahead and give it a shot on my GTEC and see if it can handle it. Um, it's going to be the first time I've ever set up where it's going to be printing with no infill. It's just going to be a spiralized uh, model. So instead of going and printing, um, a, you know, where it just goes around it several times and all that and it makes a thicker layer, it's going to be one single pass all the way through. Uh, it won't be moving from spot to spot. It just does one motion all the way up until it's completely finished. Okay, so this right here is the program I use. I just use Cura 15.04.4. I will eventually switch over to the new Cura, but the only thing is I have to figure out how to get into the settings to set my bed uh, dimensions and stuff like that, which I'll do at a later time. Um, to start out with, with the way I have mine set up, over here in preferences I have it set up where it, I put in how much a roll of PLA costs, and then it will calculate based off of weight, um, based off of whatever, it'll, it'll figure out how much, basically how much a, a part will cost to print. I'll show you here in a moment how that works. Anyway, uh, for my basic settings, I, this is what I normally use. This isn't what I'm going to use for this model, but I've had some people ask what my settings are. Uh, for the quality, layer height, uh, 0.2. Shell thickness, I usually go with 1.2. That's, I believe, 4. Uh, deals uh, for uh, not layers, but the thickness. It's, it's four times around on the print. Uh, the shell, the thickness. Um, on the bottom, I go with 1.2. Fill density typically between 20. Sometimes I go down as far as down as 10. Most of the time I print between 20 and 30. If it's going to be a really heavy part like that uh, slingshot, I went 100% on that one. Um, print speed. That one there, I usually keep it between 50 and 60, and this is the maximum print speed, the fastest it will print. It won't print anything above whatever number you put in, in into this. Uh, temperature setting. Uh, for Shaxon PLA, I usually print between 195 and 205. 195 is kind of the, the run-of-the-mill deal for the Shaxon. When it comes to the hatch box, I go sometimes as high as 150 or uh, 210 on that. And of course, whenever you print with uh, PETG, of course, it's much higher than that. Bed temperature, since I went back to the glass bed, I'm not using the, the frosted bed. I used to go 70 on the frosted. On the glass bed, I go about 65, and it works perfectly fine with the glue. Support type, I'm not going to do anything at the moment with this one, but when I do, you have your choice between touching the bill plate and touching everywhere. Uh, if it's a complicated model where you're going to need, uh, you have overhangs that are higher up on the model, you'll want to go everywhere. Otherwise, uh, just like the frog I did a while back, it's just touching the bill plate. That's all I needed. Uh, platform adhesion. I try not to mess with that. I don't have it set up right. Uh, whenever I do a raft, I can't pull anything off of it. So I try not to even mess with it. Um, of course, this is where you have your diameter, which I have a 1.75 machine. Uh, flow rate, I usually go, I just go 100%. I don't go anything above or below. And the nozzle size on mine is going to be a 0.4. On advanced, I have the retraction speed set at 30. I have the distance set at 4.5. That seems to work good for me. Initial layer thickness is 0.3. And the reason why you have this set at a higher number than your normal uh, layers is that way if your bed's a little bit warped, it's not completely flat. It'll make up the difference on that first layer, and it evens out all the rest of the layers. Uh, initial layer line width, 115, to give you a little bit uh, more adhesion. Uh, just get, makes it where it sticks a little bit better to the bed. The rest of this I don't worry about. Print speed, this is the travel speed. This is what's going to be when you, uh, whenever it's moving without printing, that's going to be your travel speed. And so that's what that is. Bottom layer speed. Uh, I have the very first layer set at 15. Uh, that way it gives you better adhesion to the bed. By just slowing it down some. 
in fill speed I have it set at zero which means it's going to default to the fastest print speed which at the moment is 50 same thing with the bottom speed and you can adjust this any way you want outer shell speed I have mine set for 25 I go up to 30 sometimes but 25 seems to be pretty safe that's it seemed to get the best results inner shell speed I have it set at zero so it's going to go back to the default on the cooling this doesn't make any difference I did verify with GTEC today the board on the GTEC Lemon Prus i3 does not support active cooling whatsoever even though there's a second fan header on the board it doesn't support active cooling so I'll be looking into doing something in the future either doing like a try doing a time circuit maybe to where I can have the fans be off for a set length of time and then come on to uh, so I could print like maybe two or three layers and then come on to, to start cooling if not I've been I haven't had much uh, problems since I switched back to the to the regular glass build plate and using the glue I haven't had any more issues with anything popping off so I'll probably just stick with that and just keep the fans around the whole time we'll see plugins I don't mess with uh, the G code I don't mess with then I go over here to expert let's see and over here it shows the retraction settings you can set the minimum travel that where it's going to have to move from one spot to another that's what that's for um, so if you want where it retracts more often you can set it for like 0.5 or whatever but if you want where it does very little retraction you can set it for three millimeters or whatever you want that way combing I have it set for all I'm still not 100% sure what that does I'm sure somebody can tell me in the comments below what's what exactly it does minimal extrusion before retracting 0 0.02 Z hop I have it set for 0.1 that seems to work pretty good for me that's where it moves when it's going to move from one set part to the other side of the part instead of just dragging the nozzle across the part it'll raise it slightly bring it over and then drop it back down line count I have it set where it does three three runs around the print where it's where it's going to be printing it'll go around it three times that way it primes the extruder gets everything where it's flowing the correct way before it starts laying down that first line for the for the base start distance uh, three millimeters away from the part so that's a really good thing to have that way you know if it's a big part whether it's actually going to fill it fit on your build plate because if it goes off your build plate especially more than three millimeters then you've got a problem <laughs> so that's kind of a nice thing to have and then the minimal length the this is the minimum amount it's going to print before it uh, before it actually switches over to actually print the the part is going to be 200 millimeters so that way it's it primes it up really good uh cooling like i said this means nothing right with this printer infill um uh, solid infill top solid infill bottom infill overlap 15 percent support i use lines you also have the option of using grid lines seem to work perfectly fine for me because it gives you it it's less surface area touching the print so it's a little bit easier to clean up I have right now I have it set for 45 degrees I usually believe this printer can go 60 degrees and eventually I'll, I'll download one of those tests and just see what it will do before it fails but uh, I right now I just have it set for 45 and sometimes it touches the part and sometimes it doesn't if it doesn't need it it doesn't touch it so that's nice the fill amounts 10 10 percent distance on X and Y 0.9 and distance on Z this is the important one that's where it touches the bottom of the print at 0.4 it comes loose a whole lot easier um, it gives you recommended settings when you put it on here it says 0.15 but I, I give it a little more than that <laughs> I'm going to select that right now the spiralize the outer contour that's what I'm going to be doing on this print rim ref like I said I haven't messed with any of these settings yet eventually I will but for now I'm, I'm not worried about it okay so let's go back over here to basic what I'm going to do since I have a 0.4 nozzle I'm just going to go ahead and go with a should I go with 0.2 or 0.4 let's go and go 0.4 for the for that and then 0.4 for that 
And then of course, I don't think it's, I need to do this, but I'll go ahead and take the, the 20 out and just put a zero there. Okay, so that's all set. So I'm going to go over here to load. Select my rocket. Okay, let me go ahead and pause this for just a moment, and that way it'll load up right. Okay, so it's loaded up. Right now it's saying it's going to take 51 minutes and all that, but this isn't the orientation we're going to do it in. Now, if I just take it like this, the other day I, I was playing with it, and if I try to rotate it, it wasn't giving me 90 degrees. This time it is. But if you ever problem, have an issue where it's saying like 89 or something like that, do lay flat first and then do that and it'll, it'll uh, fix it. So what I'm going to do now, I do have my dimensions set up on here where it's uh, all the way over to this side on my printer. From over here to there is actually 210 millimeters. So I have it set up where it says 210 is the maximum. I have it set at 185 because the binder clips set on my build plate in these corners so it's 185 between the binder clips so that's my my maximum that way I it says 200 in the all the documentation but with binder clips on the glass it's not going to get you're not going to get 200 out of it not without knocking binder clips off and then uh, because my extruder when it homes sets right here off the build plate what I do since I don't have a way of setting the offset at least I haven't figured out how to, I just move the print over a little bit, and that usually centers it up on the bill plate. Okay, so let's take one more look at our settings here. I have 0.2 layer height. I have the shell thickness of 0.4, density at 0, print speed at 50, print temperature is 195, which I'm using the clear PLA from Shaxon. That should be about right. Should I just go ahead and go with 200? You know what, let's go ahead and do 200. Since it's not going to be moving around, there won't be any stringing anyway. And that looks good. So it's going to go ahead and finish slicing here. Actually, let me go ahead and just pause this for a moment, and they'll finish slicing. Okay, and we're back. Uh, I'm maxing out what this little computer can do, so I have to pause the, the recording in order for it to actually do what it needs to do. So it's going to take 1 hour 46 minutes to print. It's going to take 2.7 meters of plastic. It's going to use 6 grams. It's going to be a cost of 15 cents. And probably in electricity, you're probably looking at about 15 cents in electricity to print it. Uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but not not by far. So, you know, for 30 cents, you got a, a got, got a pretty nice little toy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to save this to the SD card, and I will take it to the printer and print it out. I'll see you at the end of the time lapse. So that was one hour and 49 minutes. Go ahead and power off the printer. Let's take a quick look at it. Looks like everything's straight. Nice. Let's see if I can get to focus in on it. Turned out smooth. I think that turned out pretty nice.
tip of it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's got it. That's where the filament melted off when it finished up. But it looks like it, for the most part, it came out to, to a point. Let's see if I can zoom in better on it. Yeah. Just where the it oozed out when it finished up. I think that turned out all right. And this was that clear Jackson PLA. Cool. So that will do it for this. There we go. <laughs> anyway, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. I sure appreciate it. And please uh, leave a note in your com the comments below on how the screen capture come out, if it looks good or not. Um, I did get uh, a new uh, editing software, so I'm using Cyberlink. Was it Cyberlink uh, PowerDirector 14? So I'm still kind of trying to learn it. It's a little bit of a learning curve above uh, using Movie Maker, but what's nice about it is it does come with a screen capture software, so that's that's kind of a nice thing. So anyway, if you like it, I'd appreciate it, a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.